Riding the canner is one of the skills that we get the most questions about. When I talk to riders who are just starting out or who are returning to riding and ask what their biggest challenge was or is, it's usually riding the canner. And like so many other things in riding, there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of different language that's used to describe the motion of the canner. So today I'm here with Wendy Murdoch and with Elmer, and we are on the horse Joker. And Wendy is gonna show using the skeleton how the movement of the canner actually follows the horse. So one of the things we need to realize is that Elmer is a plastic skeleton and there's some things he just simply can't do. And one of which is to actually lengthen his lower back the way I talk about in riding. So we just have to accept that he's going to have a bit of a hollow back. It's just the way he's built. But we can still simulate the motion of canter that we're looking for when you're sitting on the horse. Now one of the things you need to about, realize about canter is that it is the gate of flight. And I think this is why so many people have an issue because they know trot isn't gonna be something that they're gonna get run away with. But in canter, that's when if the horse is gonna flee, he's gonna canter. And most people are worried about him going too fast and being able to stop him. And the biggest thing there is the tighter you get and the harder you pull on the reins, usually the faster the horse goes. So it's kind of counterproductive. If we understand the connection of the seat to the saddle and the canter, then hopefully you'll be able to feel more relaxed, you know, let go a little bit in your legs, not grip your horse so tight, which is sending him forward, and ease up on the reins so that you can feel like you have some control. And I think you'll agree that that's a lot of what happens is people tense on the horse and start to grip, and the horse takes that as a signal to go, and then it just kind of snowballs. So if we understand the, the motion of canter, hopefully that will help ease some of that tension and have things go in a more positive direction. So one of the things that I, um, Callie, if you just hold him. Sure. Great, thank you. So I'm just gonna come around and explain that um, we want our seat bones down in the saddle. And again, his lower back can't do what yours can, but he, we have our seat bones down in the saddle and we have got our hip, knee, and ankle. And these are our shock absorbing joints that need to be able to move as the horse moves. In the canter movement, the horse's rib cage moves forward up. And so it's a very lifting gait when done correctly. And that means that this whole rib cage rises with each stride. So um, unlike trot where the back is a little bit more stable, canter has a more flowing upward movement. If the horse does not lift the withers and he's what's called on the forehand, then you're gonna feel that you have to do more bracing because it feels like everything's driving into the ground. But we're gonna talk about the horse that's cantering well, coming up in their back. If we brace our feet forward, which a lot of people do, it's going to push back on the femur. And you can see how I just moved the whole pelvis back. And as a result, the person is gonna pitch forward. And so now we're gonna put a lot of weight on the forehand and we're gonna push the horse down instead of letting him come up. And this is a lot of the problems that people have is they get a little nervous, they brace into their heels, and then they tip forward, and then they drive the horses back a little down. He goes on the forehand, raises his head and neck, and then they get nervous, okay? So it's really important to think about leaving your leg underneath you, just as we've been doing for a nice balanced aligned seat in all the gates and that you have absorbing movement in the hip, knee, and ankle. Because the horse needs to be able to, as I said, lift this rib cage up, and our joints have to be able to follow that. So having soft receiving joints, the seat bones down in the saddle, the nice flat back, all the things we've talked about at walk and trot, we still have them in canter. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this saddle in the way that it's going to move if you were on a horse. And you're gonna see how Elmer follows that canter. I'm just gonna see if I cross his arms a little bit that I can reach the saddle, okay? So canter is an upward swing motion. And as you can see, if we follow that upward swing motion, the seat follows. Now, if we 
tip him a little bit forward, push the seat bones back a little bit, and I'm going to brace his leg a little bit forward. And you can see he doesn't have any muscle, so it's not like he can put any force into this position. We're just simply changing the alignment of the skeleton. Now, I can't move Joker. Now, I, I, you can, I have to really work, which means that the horse can't canter because the alignment is driving everything down. And so it's, it's, near, it's I'm not faking this, right? I can't move him. And he's just bones. So we're gonna put him back into the correct alignment, bring the seat a little forward, keep him upright. Yep, and there it is again. And so we have a circular motion in canner. And if you watch the pelvis, I'm gonna just have you, um, hold his hands so we get a really clear picture of the pelvis. So if you watch here, what happens with the pelvis, it just follows the saddle. Now, one of the things that happens is that people are taught a lot of different ways to get into canter. And very often, the way they get into canter is what starts the problem in the first place. Some people are told to advance their inside hip for the lead. Well, you can see, as soon as I do that, I've rotated the pelvis, and now the body's going in one direction, but we want the horse to go straight. Yes, it's a diagonal movement, it's a three-beat gait, but we still need the body of the horse to go straight. So if I turn like this and push one foot really forward and pull the other leg back, I've thrown my whole body into a twist, and that's gonna block the horse. Some horses are trained to that cue. It's a learned behavior, but it's not something you can do on every horse. Other people get nervous about, my horse is gonna go faster, and they start to tip forward and lean to try and get the canter lead. And now you can see, you gotta hold on, mm -hmm. okay? That again, it blocks the move, I can't move this. It blocks the movement of the saddle, and it makes me vulnerable because I'm leaning over and if the horse throws his head in the air, he could hit me. If he doesn't canter, I could pitch over his shoulder. It's not a safe place to be, right? So in that canter transition, we wanna think about a change of leg. The horse's leg is changing their pattern rather than a change of speed. And the horse wants to be, we want the horse to be in balance when we take that canter transition. If I start throwing myself forward or twisting, I knock the horse off balance into canter, and so I've already set myself up for some drama because I feel like he's falling and I'm gonna get nervous and tighten on the reins. So the key to canter is to wait for the horse to canter you, not knock your horse off of balance into canter, and that way you can be in the balance point where you can follow this swing motion. Does that make sense? The other important piece that you mentioned was that he doesn't have the muscle to brace. And when we showed that brace position, that often usually is with the rider holding on. So not only is it blocking the horse, but when the horse does move, that's when that bouncing happens because there's no fluid movement with the horse. The rider just moves as a separate unit. Right, and so if the rider, and I can kind of, you know, starts to, to hit the horse and do that, you can see how that's gonna be really disrupting to the horse if you're bracing on your stirrups and pushing yourself out of the saddle and then coming back in. And then, of course, the horse is going to go, oh, that's not very comfortable. So, you know, take your time getting into canter. Let your horse canter you and wait for your horse to follow his movement rather than trying to create it. Thank you so much for watching. We would love to hear now from you. Leave a comment down below and just to tell us one thing that you learned watching this demonstration that you feel might be different and a new idea from what you're doing now. Leave your comments down below. If you're watching this anywhere besides horseclass.com, go there for many free resources and to learn about our premium courses, including the Effortless Rider course taught by Wendy, where you'll see many more demonstrations with skeleton, with understanding the anatomy and the mechanics of movement while we ride.